Very well, I'm uh, glad to have this opportunity of talking to you about my uh, ideas. I have given talks before, but they've moved on since my last talk, which was in Spain a couple of months ago. So, for a long time I've been interested in the role which mind plays in the physical world. Um, it's not very much accepted. There are things like telepathy and so on, which uh, are not yet accepted, but that, that they got me interested in, in that. And uh, I've, uh, well, that's some 40 years I've been working on this and gradually putting ideas together. And quite a few people have been working on, on this. Uh, so I've been putting various ideas together, and this is the sort of thing which may um, form the basis for real developments and perhaps uh, start a new paradigm. My main idea really is that physics, uh, while it claims to be completely general, is just a particular paradigm that works in its own way and needs to have additional ideas inserted into it. So this slide makes the point that physics is uh, very much a mathematical subject. In biology, on the other hand, uh, you, you could say it's mathematics plays a less important role and it's largely the study of mechanisms. You want to know how things work, so you study mechanisms. So we really need to find ways of putting together mathematics and mechanisms, well, the mathematical and biological side of nature. And in fact, uh, one of my colleagues, um, Plamen Semyonov, has been uh, developing, uh, well, been in, uh, organizing a group of people to discuss this kind of thing. So what this may well do is reveal mechanisms underlying physics. Um, physics is sort of uncertain about details, and uh, people claim that we'll always be uncertain. We, we cannot talk exactly about what's going on. Uh, whereas in biology we do see the mechanisms that underlie, uh, well, we can study the mechanisms that underlie what we see. So in a way biology is looking more deeply. So this is to amplify the point that physics is mathematical. Um, some examples of mathematical theories are Newtonian mechanics and Maxwell's equation. And here we have Maxwell's equations. And these work not very nicely in the uh, region of application. Uh, Newton's theory for mechanics and Maxwell's equations for electromagnetism. And the standard model also works very well. Uh, this is a theory that um, tries to explain the very many fundamental particles. So some people claim we will get a theory of everything but there are certain problems, uh, clouds on the horizon, to use uh, a famous phrase. Uh, one problem with the standard model is that it does not include gravity, and it's uh, difficult to uh, integrate gravity into it. Uh, there are um, ideas such as supersymmetry, and while the mathematics is nice, it does not seem to correspond to the real world. Supersymmetry predicts that every particle has a corresponding superparticle or sparticle, but these have never been found. And then there's a problem with um, uh, dark matter and dark energy, which are uh, people had to hastily change their theories to try and fit them in. And uh, some problems more connected with what I'm doing is um, fitting in biology and the um, collapse of a state vector, which is a term I'll be coming to. But first of all, uh, why is biology a problem? So the difficulty with biology is the way a biological system varies, that the, a, given, uh, uh, a, a, a given species will very greatly, and so uh, you, you have to try and fit this into the theory. Uh, and in physics, uh, we say, well, some things have fixed values, and others we describe in terms of prob probability distributions. But then 
uh, to do the calculations, you have to presume the probabilities are independent, and biology is not like that. These um, things you see, uh, relationships and mechanisms, they're important in biology, and that means that things are not varying independently. Uh, well, this is just um, explaining it by saying if you have a kit of parts, you can't just throw the parts together. Uh, and in the same way, um, biology is more subtle. So the uh, precise relationships and organisms are important in biology and can't be handled by a nice um, formula as in physics. So that's the difficulty in biology. Um, and now we come to the, uh, this collapse of the wave function that I mentioned. Uh, this is all about what happens when you make an observation. You've probably heard of Schrodinger's cat a cat that is simultaneously dead and alive. This is an imaginary experiment where you have a particle that uh, has um, a certain probability of decaying over the length of the experiment. And the theory uh, shows instead of it either decays or it does not decay, but you have a, a kind of combination, a superposition. Uh, yeah, this... Um, is uh, actually from Wikipedia, a diagram showing this branch with um, a live cat on one side, a dead cat on the other side. Uh, the usual interpretation is that you actually have all these universes present at once, the, the many universe idea. So there are a lot of universes and we're just in this one, just as I see only what's in this room, um, we, si we see only what's in one of the universes. But this just moves the um, uh, problem elsewhere because how is it that I am in one universe and not the other? And that is not really explained. Uh, so the alternative to many universes is the collapse idea that only one of the universes predicted by the usual theory is actually there. The, the rest just disappears from the equation. Physicists are not like this idea because it, you have two equations explaining how things change over time. The usual one and the equation telling you we, uh, how the collapse happens. Okay, but um, you might... There may be ways of getting around it and I'm going to mention now the theory of Wheeler. You have what well, I'm calling it a reflexive reflexive circuitry um, and uh, is down here an observer and an observed system and a circuit they both affect each other so this uh, circuitry there might be positive feedback and you would then get an instability so this is something extra so since something different is happening, it's not surprising that you'd have a different equation to describe it. So that's Wheeler's basic idea. And then he, um, what he suggested is if you have many of these processes, you might gradually build up form in the same way that a sculptor builds up a form by a lot of separate operations. But Wheeler didn't really uh, have any of a detail, he just said the distinction between observer and observed may account for everything, but he, he, he didn't have a proper explanation. So I'm now going to suggest that uh, there are close parallels between physics and biology. Um, and I'll just be talking about one of them. So biology also has observation in it. Uh, and uh, you can argue that this observation is the process by which, uh, by which our skills develop. We keep um, observing, seeing what happens, and that's the process by which, which systems develop their skills. So whereas physics just has uh, equations and the idea that this might fabricate form, 
With biology, we know how it happens uh, in principle. Uh, we can see mechanisms working away. So let's look a little bit into uh, life. And being a physicist, I'm interested in general principles that are behind the details. Uh, biologists may get, well, I, I guess there are principles like natural selection, but biologists are more concerned with uh, the tedious difficulty of details. So on the uh, lines of get, getting at principles, I'm going to take another analogy, in this case the analogy with computers. And there, if you ask how do computers work, um, people will explain various, um, the various ideas behind the computer. For example, the microprocessor. The uh, idea behind the microprocessor is just that you have a collection of operations that the microprocessor can do. Each, um, each process has a, an associated number and when that number is input into a microprocessor, the microprocessor performs the corresponding operation. So when you explain to somebody how, how computers do these amazing things, uh, you are really talking about a lot of ideas, like the idea of a microprocessor, or the um, computer language, say, and uh, all, all sorts of things like that. And this is how things work when people design things. They start off with an idea, and then they figure out how to implement that idea, and maybe feedback to change the idea. But they are going from uh, an idea and then producing something which implements the idea. So progress goes in steps, and these steps gradually build up to the amazing organization. And uh, maybe no single person understands all the details, but it just turns into this grand project. And this is a bit like in biology, because we don't know the design. The biologist uh, looks at what is going on and figures out what the ideas are that are implemented in biology. So we can guess that um, an organism or a, uh, a whole species uh, I interacting uh, is really the implementation of some kind of design. And uh, the important thing uh, is the thing uh, coming to structures with power. So this is the thing that really distinguishes uh, biology from the things that physicists do. And just to illustrate this with a computer, um, just random code doesn't do anything interesting. You have very specific code to produce a specific result. A specific code has power. And I, mentioned, I might mention that in biology, uh, it's not just the structures that have power, but there are structures that give structures power. Uh, an example of this is language. Um, my, um, uh, of course, language is a very powerful tool for expressing ideas, but it doesn't come fully developed. Instead, we have the capacity to uh, create and to understand language. So in other words, you have uh, some initial structures and these work away to produce a more advanced structure such as a human language. And in fact, uh, language or more generally signs are things that help build structures. There is a, a science called uh, biosemiotics which is about the role that signs play in biology. And uh, people in biosemiotics would argue that um, the whole design is built around the use of uh, signs with particular significance. So really meaning is built into biology in a fundamental way. Now I'll just mention that you can do real work on this, it's not just ideas. Um, one of my collaborations was a mathematician, Niels Bass, and he, uh, he proposed a formalism called hyperstructures. And a student of mine, uh, George Osborne, simulated this. So this um, is a page from his thesis. And um, here we have um, the ba Bass's formalism. I uh, have here a um, reference to where you can read the whole thesis. And this is just a 
flow chart um, with the design of a program. So the point I'm making here is that uh, you, you can't just dismiss these as ideas, that you can actually do proper research into it. Uh, now I'll just um, make a point which uh, I've sort of mentioned before. Some of these structures um, are not only powerful in that they can do uh, important things, but they can do things under a wide range of conditions, so they're very, in other words, they're, they're very flexible. And the way this works, as I've already mentioned, is by these um, systems. You, uh, the child is observing what is happening, sees connections, builds structures, tries them out, and gradually gets better and better at language. And this also um, applies to uh, more generally to, in biology to science systems. Okay, well, so far I've been um, talking about um, biology, and you may ask, what has this got to do with physics? So I'm now going to talk about um, uh, the theory of um, one of my other colleagues, Alexa Yardley. Uh, she's proposed this idea, circular theory, which is really uh, a lot of intuitions, and it's really been quite difficult finding out what they, they mean in terms of science. And but I've gradually come to understand what this, this, this mysterious um, writings are all about. I think the starting point is the idea of the cycle, and uh, to make the point that cycles occur naturally in complicated systems such as the weather. So this is um, a general property of complex systems. It doesn't matter what the underlying physics is, so we can say that we will um, always get these cycles. And the question then is, the point now is that some cycles are uh, stable, uh, they last for a very long time, uh, instead of just disappearing. Um, uh, well, the weather is an example, uh, a weather pattern may persist for a long time, and, or it may uh, disappear. So we can assume that um, if something persists, there must be some mechanism that helps it to persist. So once we have a, a deviation from some uh, standard behavior, uh, some process starts up and restores the initial behavior. So uh, I'd say these are the associated structures. And if we think in biological terms, we can imagine there's natural selection at some, uh, you tend to get mechanisms around which are good at supporting um, uh, cycles for a long time. So biology starts to come into physics at this point, with some structures of particular importance in maintaining other structures. One other point which is well understood in terms of um, complex design systems is that you have a, well, they call it the edge of chaos, and um, the edge of chaos things evolve rapidly at the same time, you need to have a situation of less activity so that things can become stabilised. So when, you, when you're learning a new skill, you sort of being, have an active phase of exploration and then a less active stage of consolidation. So again, we have, um, seem to have very general principles independent of the details, but they will select out the processes that have this power. Now I'll just like to mention something which I think is very important. It is um, something which has been known for a long time but has been rather ignored by the scientific establishment. And that is essentially meaning in, in uh, specific sounds. And um, this is called thematics and it's said that Michael Faraday actually discovered this. If you look this up on the internet you can find um, a lot of YouTube videos where music is played at water and they, there's some gadget which is able to photograph the patterns and this is one. So you see the pattern changing as the music progresses and beautiful music produces beautiful patterns. Uh, right. um, well, this is a, a bit of a mess with the Chinese as well. But anyway, the idea is too complicated to <laughs> explain. Yeah. So, uh, I'll just say that whereas before I talked of a pair, observer and observed, 
um, it turns out that you really need to take three into consideration. For example, uh, the idea, the unfolding one idea, and the context. So the idea is roughly that there's a certain sphere of activity, which um, they call the semiosphere, associated with a particular meaning. And uh, there's this area in which different ideas unfold. This has um, an ancient history, the philosophy of Charles Sanders Peirce, who, uh, who, who developed the science of signs, or semiotics. So whereas you, in physics you have input and output, in semiotics you have, um, let's see, sign, object and interpretant, that there's an interpretation process that links the sign and object. And Peirce got thrown out of his university because uh, truth according to semiotics is a different kind of thing to what philosophers like. Another physics idea which I think uh, is very relevant is the idea of um, equilibrium between phases. So you could think of the, um, uh, the idea an observer has and the observed system as being um, things which are um, yeah, the things which are different and yet compatible with each other. So when you have a, a liquid gas transition, um, you have two systems. So whereas in a single phase you really have one particular kind of organization which spreads, in phase equilibrium you've got two different ones which are yet compatible and they keep each other going. And um, so in these triadic ideas you've got three entities in uh, uh, all in equilibrium as, as happens and uh, uh, so in other words it looks as if the kind of situation we have in physics would be relevant to these um, in this very different context so now I'm going to go through how this might get us from these simple circles to the kind of complexity we have in physics where, where there are specific laws and uh, the question which Wheeler didn't solve is how laws might come about as a result of fabricating form. So you start off with a cycle and then this produces more and more complicated structures. And point to bear in mind is that um, organisms not only, uh, not only think themselves but they may uh, do things in, in their environments like birds building nests and this will involve codes specific to different aspects of reality. So a grand conclusion is that um, just as people make societies that are stable by making complex structure, developing um, systems that, that make the structure of society, uh, this, um, oops. So the same thing is happening to uh, the kind of subtle life based on cycles, we can expect that may eventually build up its own universe or favourable environment, favourable to life. So uh, to use the old cliché, this will underlie life, the universe and everything. So just to um, sum up my conclusions, that um, we should look to biology to understand physics better. Um, it's been assumed that biology is irrelevant to physics, but that is not the case. So I've um, talked about a whole collection of ideas, pieces of a, what I think will form the basis of a new paradigm. Furthermore, as I mentioned in this example of um, Osborne simulation, you should uh, be able to uh, develop these ideas and um, uh, um, treat them scientifically, in other words. This will be a task for the future. Oh, One point about making models is that it seems to be very difficult to explain these kind of ideas, and uh, building models um, seems to be able to, to uh, get you around that. Or the, the, the Tao that can be expressed in words is not the true Tao. <laughs> in the same way, the uh, ideas may not be expressible in, in words, but you can, you can produce a, a picture which helps to explain it. So I'd just like to credit uh, some of my sources. Um, I mentioned to somebody that I, uh, language was a strange 
very strange phenomenon. He said, have you read Ballard's book? So this book is develops the idea that the quantum universe is uh, run on very, princi- very similar principles to human societies um, and uh, brings in Bohr's ideas and anyway, that, that ha- helps establish the connections for me. Biosemiotics, uh, I mentioned, is this discipline which applies sign, sign theory in the um, context of biology. And there's this um, very nice book by Hofmeier which explains it all and how, it's going, how it goes beyond ordinary biology. And I uh, have mentioned the circular theory, which um, is, uh, well... She uh, wrote to me this idea, everything's a circle, uh, and I thought, oh, strange, there must be something behind it. Uh, she had the idea that you make a circle with something else, which is really this um, feedback loop. And one idea is the oppositional dynamics, which is really this idea of two things which are former units, even though they're very different. That's one of her important themes. And then uh, the colleague in our group, Alex Hankey, he's been um, developing complexity biology which includes the role of consciousness and um, uh, conscious information, so he's been talking about these kind of structures as well. So that's uh, the end, thank you for listening.